Okay, let's get started with question six, which is um, also a question about Q learning. Uh, in this case, this is a picture of the MDP that we have, um, and these are the various observations that we observe grouped by episode. So each of these corresponds to one trajectory of Pac-Man through this grid world. And you can see that um, you know all the transition rewards are zero except for the exit transition for all of these episodes. Um, and the exit is where you end up getting the reward. So part A is basically about uh, finding estimated Q values based on these samples that we see over here. And in particular, we're going to use direct evaluation in the case of part A. In the case of part B, we're going to be using Q learning. And recall that the way direct evaluation works is basically, you know, so in, in the first case, what I would do is I would, I would see, I'm trying to estimate the Q value of 3, 2, comma n. So I'll look up what are all the places where I can find that in all of my episodes. So here's one place where I see it. Um, not here, not here. The one more place is over here. Right, those are the only two places. And you would see what is the uh, future reward that was obtained by Pac-Man in each of these cases. So in this case, the future reward was 0 plus 50, which is 50. In this case, it was 0 plus 50 also. And then what you would do is you would average these values. So what's the average of 50 and 50? It's 50. And so the answer for this would be equal to 50. So basically you calculate the direct evaluation um, uh, uh, version of, of the Q value by just averaging the actual total future reward for each of the episodes where this thing appears. Okay, what about this one? Q of uh, 3 comma 2 comma S, where does it appear? Um, so here's one place, and here is also one place. In both of these cases, the uh, future reward is 0 plus 30, which is 30, so the average of both of those is 30. In this case, you have 2 comma 2 comma E. This appears in a few places, so you have one here, one here, one here, and there's also one at the beginning. What are the rewards? Here it is 0 plus 0 plus 50, so it's 50. For this one it's 30, for this one it's 50, this one again 30. And the average of those numbers is 40. So that's the answer here. And that's it for part A. Okay, so now let's work on part B. Um, in part B, so we're provided the Q-learning update equation over here, and now the aim is to uh, not quite, uh, you know, find the, the, the Q values over here, but rather what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify what is the point at which each of these values becomes non-zero. So at what point during Q-learning, that is in which episode and which iteration within that episode, uh, does each of these values become non-negative? So the way to do this is, you know, it's possible to answer this question without having to explicitly calculate all the Q values, because we only care about keeping track of when one of them becomes non-zero, right? So to keep track of that, I've drawn kind of a copy of the original grid over here, as well as all of the white squares I've divided into four, four spots, one for each action that you could take. So, you know, north, south, um, east, west, right? And these are all of the destination states, uh, and from here, there's only one action, which is to exit. And once you exit, you get the corresponding reward, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each episode. We're going to execute each of the updates for each episode and kind of mentally update this picture as we go. So let's start with episode one. Episode one, we see the first action is south, then east, east, north, which means starting from here, the agent goes south, east, east, north, and then exits. Now at this point, what happens is, you know, recall from down here, this, this update equation, there's basically, there's two cases in which Q of S comma A is going to be updated, right? So previously, if this thing was equal to zero, it's going to become non-zero either if this reward term over here is non-zero or if this entire term over here is non-zero. Those are the two ways that this thing can uh, go from being zero to being non-zero. Right? And now in this case, what's happened is from this state, the agent has exited and that gives us a reward of plus 50, right? which means that this term 
it's going to end up being positive in this case, right? So it's going to be some weighted average of the, the old value, which was zero, and this thing, which is some positive number. So the Q value of this state is going to turn positive. Okay, that's at the end of episode one. Then we run episode two. Episode two is south, east, south. So from here, south, east, south. And then we exit and we get minus 100. So now what happens is, you know, it's, it's the same situation, except now R is a negative number, which means this whole thing becomes a negative quantity. So over here, we have something negative. The exact values don't matter to us right now, right? And, 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 and like, of course, you know, the actual values will change depending on like, you know, the values of gamma, the values of alpha, and so on and so forth. But we're only keeping track of which ones are positive, negative, and the blank ones are zero for now. Okay, episode three, south, east, south, east, east, south. So south, east, east, south. We exit, we get plus 30. So this thing is positive. Okay, episode four, south, east, east, north. Okay, so this time we go south, east, east, north, and then we exit. But note that in this case, actually there's an, there's an update happening in the transition from this state to the state above as well. Why? Because if we come down here once again, what's happening between both of these states is there's no reward, right? The, the, the transition from 3-2 going north to 3-3, it gives you zero reward. However, the successor state does in fact have a positive V value. That is the max of all the Q values of this state up here is positive. Why? Because it was, it was made positive in episode one, right? So now it has the potential to spread its effect to this state over here, right? Which means in particular, what's gonna happen is now this Q value becomes positive. The other Q values of the state are still zero, but the one corresponding to north becomes positive. Of course, these two are two different numbers. They're two different magnitudes. We only care about the sign for, uh, for right now. Okay, and then what also happens is this last step over here happens. So, you know, you, the agent exits from three, three, and what this does is it modifies this positive term, but it's it's still going to be a positive number because it just gets averaged with 50 once again with some discount. Okay, finally, we have episode five, which is southeast, east, south. So from here, south, east, east. Okay, so this transition also gives us an update. Why? Because in this case, the successor state is 3, 2, which has a positive V value because of this one positive Q value. Right, and this is the successor for this state. So over here also we get a positive. So uh, at this point we were over here. So we were going from uh, one two to, to two two, and then from two two to three two. That's what gave us this. And then the last one is three two to three one. So we go down, and then what happens is now this one gets updated because of the positive over here. And then we exit, this thing becomes more positive. Okay, at this point we have everything we need to answer all three of these blanks. So at what point did 1, 2 east become non-zero? Well, it never became non-zero, it's still equal to zero, right? Which means this is just never. What about 2, 2 east? 2, 2 east is this one. And this one actually became positive towards the very end. So it happened in episode five, iteration number three. So for this, we will write five comma three. And for this one, three comma two comma S, that corresponds to this one over here. This also became positive towards the end. In fact, it's episode five, iteration four. So this one is five four. And that concludes part B. Okay, so part C is asking us, suppose that we took our samples for Q learning and we grouped them pairwise such that you have you know a bunch of uh, samples where now each sample consists of two of these transitions. So there's, you know, from ST to ST plus one, as well as ST plus one to ST plus two. And you have many of these kinds of samples. Now, in this case, how would you formulate a different kind of update rule uh, for the Q values of each of the state action pairs? And uh, there's, there's, you know, there's three answers over here. 
um, all three are, are equally valid, uh, you know, Q value updates which you could use. And there's, an, there's a small explanation of each of them. I'll just go through each of these solutions. So the first one, so all, all three of them, what they have in common is you're performing um, an exponential moving average on the old Q value as well as some new value which is based on the sample. Right, so they both have the one minus alpha times the old Q value plus alpha times. And then in this case, what's happening is you're using the fact that you have you know these two transitions and you know the rewards in both of those cases. So basically you discount the first reward uh, by, by gamma to the power zero, the second one by gamma to the power one, and then whatever comes afterwards gets, uh, it, it gets uh, multiplied by gamma to the power two, right? And then this max over actions of Q of ST plus two, this is what would have been max over all actions of Q ST plus one if you just had one transition, right? So that's what the first option is. The second option is to, you know, literally uh, kind of recursively apply the, the old Q learning update twice. So you can see it looks similar to this up to this point, but now instead of directly using this reward, instead we, you know, we, we, we pre-multiply by gamma and then what is inside is nothing but, you know, once again, it's one more weighted average, right? Except this time it applies to just the second transition. So it's like, you know, out here you have, uh, you have the Bellman equation, you know, kind of being, being applied once. And then it's also being applied once inside these brackets over here. Right, so that's why it's called nested Q learning update. The third one is kind of similar to the second one, except, you know, this term over here is replaced with the max of the old term. So you can see uh, that portion is right over here, as well as this term over here, which corresponds to what the expected future reward would have been if you did not assume the second transition, right? So this is assuming the second transition. This is assuming you don't know anything about, about the second transition. And you know, the, like ultimately this number is the max of this quantity as well as this quantity. Now, why does this work? Well, again, it kind of goes back to the intuition of what uh, the Q value is. It's the expected future reward of an optimally acting agent, right? And an optimally acting agent, you know, if it had information available about what the next action is going to be versus if it assumed that it did not have that information and if it maximizes over these two, that's going to be what the optimal agent would choose, right? The optimal agent would would be choosing whichever of these is the better option uh, which has which has the higher value so this is the max of the normal q learning update and the one step look ahead update and this is the third option and with that that concludes question six as well as the review worksheet